Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. This episode, we're talking all about the solar eclipse that's occurring next week. For observers here in Chicago and also in parts of the northeastern U.S. and parts of Canada, you've got a great chance to see a partially eclipsed sun rising at sunrise on the morning of June 10th. So let's figure out what to look for and when, and also what exactly is happening with this particular solar eclipse. So I'm sure a lot of you remember the total solar eclipse that crossed the continental U.S. in August of 2017. The line of totality, where a fully eclipsed sun could be viewed for a couple of minutes, stretched from Oregon to South Carolina, but was quite narrow. Places outside the line of totality, like Chicago, witnessed a partial solar eclipse. Next week's eclipse is quite a bit different. Totality won't be visible from anywhere on Earth. But in this case, it isn't just a partial eclipse. From some areas, the moon will appear directly in front of the sun, but it won't completely cover it. This will be an annular solar eclipse, where a ring of sun is visible around the moon. So why does this happen? Well, the moon's orbit is nearly circular, but it is slightly elongated. You might have heard the distance from Earth to the moon is 238,000 miles. That's the average. It actually varies from 224,000 miles at the closest to 251,000 miles at the farthest. The difference isn't really noticeable unless you look really closely. So-called supermoons that are hyped in the media are full moons that occur when the moon is closest to Earth, but they only appear slightly larger in the sky than average. The difference is very noticeable, though, between total and annular solar eclipses. The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but also 400 times closer to Earth. This allows total solar eclipses to occur, where the sun is just barely covered by the face of the moon. When a total solar eclipse coincides with the moon being at its farthest point from Earth, though, it isn't large enough in the sky to cover the sun completely, and the surrounding ring of sun remains. Another way to visualize this is by looking at the moon's shadow in space. We've seen in other episodes that shadows have two parts, the darker umbra and the outer penumbra. Areas that lie in the outer part of the moon's shadow, the penumbra, will see a partial solar eclipse. If the moon is close enough to Earth at the time of the eclipse, its umbra will reach Earth's surface, and observers in this smaller area will see a total solar eclipse. If, however, the moon is farther away from Earth at the time of the eclipse, notice how its umbra doesn't reach Earth. So observers directly under where the umbra points, this is an area known as the ant umbra, will see an annular eclipse. The eclipse next Thursday will appear partial in Chicago. Sunrise that morning is at 5.18 a.m. and the sun will already be partially eclipsed as it rises. Now this is the time I remind you to never look at the sun without proper eye protection. The sun may look safe to look at, especially at sunrise, but infrared light can still easily pass through the atmosphere and cause eye damage. So please make sure you're using safe and effective eye protection to view this eclipse. You'll have to catch it pretty much right at sunrise because the show will be over quickly by about 5.39 a.m. That's only about 20 minutes after sunrise. For areas farther east, like Southeast Canada, New York State, and much of New England, the odd sight of a crescent sun will rise, and the partial phase will be visible a bit longer after sunrise. The annular phase won't be visible in any of these locations. It's going to be confined to an area farther north in Canada, across Greenland, and into northeast Russia. We're very close to the summer solstice right now, so the north pole of Earth is tilted almost as far as it ever is, toward the sun. And this results in a very wide area where the annular phase can be seen. Instead of a relatively small circle, the path of annularity will be stretched out across Earth's surface, although in very lightly populated areas for this particular eclipse. So if you're in one of the areas where this will be visible, hope for clear skies next Thursday morning, put on your eclipse glasses, and give it a look. For even more information about the eclipse, check out Sky Observer's Hangout, happening Wednesday, June 9th, the night before the eclipse, on Adler's YouTube channel. Well, for much of the U.S. and the world, this eclipse won't be visible. 
But in a couple of years, we have two solar eclipses that will be visible from parts of the United States. On the morning of October 14th of 2023, an annular solar eclipse will cross from Oregon to Texas. And just six months later, a total solar eclipse will cross from Texas up through Maine, giving Chicago a 94% eclipse and giving areas around Carbondale, Illinois, their second total eclipse in less than seven years as they were eclipsed in 2017. Eclipses happen in other parts of the solar system too. We've talked before about the major moons of Jupiter and how through backyard telescopes, you can see the shadow of the moons on the cloud tops of that giant planet. You can also see the moons go into or emerge from Jupiter's shadow on occasion. Jupiter is currently rising in the sky after midnight, so it's more of a morning appearance in the sky, but it will be making a great evening appearance later on in the summer. On the planet Mars, the Curiosity rover observed a solar eclipse by the larger of the Martian moons, Phobos, in 2013. These images were taken three seconds apart, and you can clearly see that Phobos isn't round, but shaped more like a potato. Well, back here on Earth, if you're lucky and you get a good look at that silhouetted moon during the solar eclipse, you can also spot it the very next day, much more easily, in the evening sky. Friday, June 11th, Venus and the moon are together again. Now, they were quite close, you might remember, back on May 12th. And a month later, they won't be quite as close, but still a lovely pairing in the west-northwest after sunset. They'll be substantially easier to spot, too, with the moon being a little bit more illuminated and Venus a little bit higher over the horizon at sunset. Two nights later, the moon will be above the red planet Mars, much higher in the western sky after the sun goes down. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. You can tune in next time as I cover the summer solstice and some of the amazing sights in the summer night sky that are rising earlier and earlier in the night. So thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel. Also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.